We are Ben and Rebecca of Outliers Overland. Welcome to our life on the road as we drive to the top of North America on Alaska's Dalton Highway. Coming up in this video, after battling an engine temperature problem, I fix it with aluminum foil. The pooper broke and duct tape saves the day. We test my repairs by traversing the Arctic's infamous Adigan Pass and share how to make full-time overlanding a sustainable lifestyle. Whew. Hello, Coldfoot, Alaska. It is a beautiful day out here. Definitely very peaceful place to stay. A uh, couple other truckers pulled in for the night. But now it's time to pursue this electrical problem a little bit further. Well, I suppose starting the engine is a good place to start. I'm guessing the gauge is gonna be cold because the engine's cold and this problem definitely seems to be heat related. Yes, the gauge is uh, cold now. First things first, let's check to see what kind of uh, voltage we're getting out of the alternator at the batteries. 14.76. That is more than enough voltage for a uh, 12 volt system. Those battery terminals, they're not really corroded, but there is a lot of dirt buildup on there. Okay, engine off. 12.9 on the forward battery and 12.9 on the rear battery. Also on my list of things to check a little bit further today are the grounds. And grounds guys, they can be anywhere and everywhere. It is really hard to know exactly where they all are. But in this case, I can see quite a few. Oh, uh, I don't know if they're gonna be part of our problem or not, but. It's just a process of elimination at this point. So just inside the front bumper, there's a handful of grounds right there. And they're kind of scattered all around the vehicle. It's just one of those things. Now don't be jealous of my awesome tool bag. It is a generalized bag, but I really, am in need of a uh, new tool bag but i don't like tool boxes because there's wasted space this thing can shove and cram into places and i've said it before every cubic inch ah, every cubic inch counts on these rigs batteries are removed and they are definitely dirty a little bit of uh battery acid corrosion on that one but Let's get these things cleaned up and we'll clean up the uh, battery tray as well. Well, it's almost impossible to have every single thing. You're always gonna get caught off guard and I do not have a very simple thing called a wire brush. Yes, a wire brush, like 99 cents from the dollar store or whatever. I do have aluminum foil. Oh yeah, we are a high class operation here on Outliers Overland. Make do with what you have and roll with the punches. But that's actually working surprisingly well. Okay, that is the uh, forward battery cleaned up now. Now I'm just gonna go through and clean up anything I can off these little eyes that hook onto the battery terminal post. Wow, that. I'm impressed, aluminum foil, bravo. Okay, there's still dirt like on the outside here, but everything metal to metal has been cleaned. On a side note, the uh, coolant bottle came down quite a ways last night after driving. And every time you crack open your cooling system, there is always gonna be little air that uh, burps and uh, leads out through this reservoir. The grounds here, man, they are all visually in really good shape. And I'm hesitant to do much to them because I want to figure out what exactly was causing the problem. But seriously, those grounds look beautiful. Well, 
Well, there is only one direction to go from here, and that is north, but we don't make it very far. We know this guy. Well, virtually. <laughs> Fellow Alaskan and Olander. Seeing you guys. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? What's going on? Dude, it's funny. Finally, I've ran into more people I know up here than I've seen in like the last ten days. This is pretty funny. <laughs> well, nice truck and camper. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I like it. Awesome. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. Just getting on the road for the day, heading up towards I think Galbraith. Despite being twice the size of Texas and practically being able to count all of our highways on one hand. You run into people all the time. And that was Tim. Uh, finally got to meet in person, but he is a fellow Alaskan and in the YouTube and overlanding community. I'll put a link to his channel in the uh, video description, but it's just nice running into people on the road. That's ultimately what it is all about. And after all these years of doing it, it really does, you know, aside from brand new fresh experiences, bring us the most joy. As we leave Coldfoot, the pavement is a pleasant break from the hundreds of miles of gravel road on this journey. The Dalton Highway was built in the name of oil and, aside from when it goes underground, it is completely paralleled by the 800 mile Trans-Alaska Pipeline. When on the road traveling, there are two things we never pass up. Okay, we are here for a pit stop, but we're leaving the engine running, and so far, so good on the engine. But when you're out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, we are firm believers, don't turn off that engine until you're ready to park for the night. It's just lessons learned over the years. But now, we have some uh, house chores to take care of, because what goes in must come out. Okay. This is the cassette toilet. Very handy. So you might notice that duct tape. This is another thing that went wrong for us uh, in the past week. The little spring-loaded vent button broke, so we made the most of things with duct tape. Very Alaskan. Okay, I also like to always remove this little slide thing because you do not want it dropping into there. We carry a bottle of water to rinse the cassette out. We do not use the entire bottle because we save some to rinse off the outside of the cassette when we're all finished. A little shake and the final dump. Okay, I always like to give this rubber boot a little rinse because that will cause leaks and then just start from the top and just rinse it off a little. And that's that. Oh, that was cool. I'll have to make that one work. Okay. I always like it when there are trash cans in the middle of nowhere. I like it better oh, empty. if they are empty. Yeah, get in there. I think it's the side there, but I don't have to see on the side. There we go, finally. Baby wipes go a real long ways in this lifestyle. You're always getting dirty and you don't want to necessarily go in back and got a nifty little trash bag for the cab that doesn't take up much space. After all these years, you've got a lot figured out, honey. It is about to get real as we put my aluminum foil repairs to the test. 
The Brooks Range hosts the tallest mountains of the Arctic, and it is also where the landscape changes from lush forest to vibrant alpine tundra. This stretch is as intense as it is beautiful, with 12% grades and the 4,700 foot Attigan Pass ahead, my eyes constantly bounce between the road and engine temperature gauge. 4,718 feet at this spot. We're at the top of Attigan Pass in the Brooks Range. This is spectacular up here. You getting some Instagrams? Trying to. Yeah? What do you think so far? It's beautiful. Breathtaking drive. call it an early day for driving. We've covered about 100 miles so far, made it up and over to the Brooks Range and are now pulling into, oh, what's this place called again? Galbraith Lake. And there's a little campground here. Never been here before, but oh, hey, there's vault toilet and trash. We didn't quite have to make our uh, pit stop today, but it never hurts to, uh, just play it safe when it comes to that stuff. All right, let's find a site. One of the reasons we picked Galbraith Lake to stop at tonight is because it does have cell phone coverage. And as most of you probably know, we work from the road. So we need to be able to make some stops along the way, check messages, check emails, check on the videos, uh, check orders, all of those good things to keep everything uh, running smoothly at home, so to speak. One of the things that we do make sure to do is carry two different carriers with us. So we have a hotspot from one and a cell phone from another, and it just broadens your horizons, so to speak, because if one company doesn't have a tower, another one probably does. I think we have found the spot that we're gonna park or uh, camp for the night at. Uh, some people have taken liberties with a lot of the rocks, but it's big and open. And uh, we kind of told Tim that we're going to be parking here if he passes through the area to swing by. So this would give plenty of room for guests. We always like to make sure that we're parking in a good spot. So I've done a quick speed test. We've got 3.82 on the down and 4.46 on the up. Can't complain about that. It'll do and we can get our work done. All right, we're all set up, safe and sound inside, out of the elements, away from the bugs. I've got my computer, my notebooks, my file folders, and I'm all ready to get to work. When you sit down and think about all of the systems we have in place in this little box so that we can create a sustainable lifestyle here, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it, there's the box itself so that we're out of the elements, away from the bugs, warm, safe, dry. Then you think about the solar on the roof. So it brings in the power. We've got the batteries to store the power. We have the inverter to charge all of the 110 uh, appliances and computers. Then we have USB ports to charge the camera gear. And oh my God, the list goes on. But the point is, if you're going to have a full-time lifestyle like this, it really helps to have a place where you can come in and work, have all of the things that you need, have a place to sleep and rest, make your food, be away from the bugs like they're nuts outside right now, or the weather when it's bad because you never know what it's going to be like. And then just, it's already kind of a challenging lifestyle because you never know what's coming next and you're always on the move. So anything you can do to make it easier really helps a lot.
I think Beck said it very well. But I'd also like to throw in, we took showers this morning and we are clean. That's the shower and the wet bath right there. It is truly about trying to not replicate what you would normally have at home, but just have systems to cover your basic human and, I don't know, life obligations. I'd also like to share with you uh, how our engine temperature gauge issue went today. It did very well. It acted normal the entire 100 mile drive. And keep in mind, the other day when it came on, we had to get 160 miles on it before it uh, demonstrated the problem. But so far, so good. I'm not gonna do a happy dance yet. But if it all goes well and we get to the bottom of the Dalton and back to Fairbanks, I'll do a happy dance there. We're about ready to prepare our big meal of the day. I can't call it lunch, I can't call it dinner, but we're hungry, so we're cooking. And one thing that's so fantastic about living in this little camper is that everything has duality in its purpose. So our stove is not just the stove we cook on, but also when we close this lid becomes a source of heat for the camper. On tonight's menu, chicken with mushroom sauce. Start with a little avocado oil in the bottom before we put the chicken in. Couple of chicken breasts. They're still a little frozen, but that will change quickly. Few seasonings for the meat. Now it's time to start adding vegetables. Onions first. Since we're having mushroom sauce, we're gonna add some mushrooms now. I love it when we can find a healthy, tasty sauce, um, easy and ready to go. Ben found this one at the grocery store in Fairbanks. It looks pretty tasty. And here we go. We'll let that puppy simmer on low for a little bit and slide it over to the cool side of the stove top. Ben made homemade chicken noodle soup the other day and we have some leftover pasta. So I'm gonna throw this in and make it like a casserole. These have been in the fridge, so I'm just going to let them sit on top and warm up for a little bit from the steam below. I think we're ready to eat, so we're just going to serve up the plates. That looks good. And I cut up some green onions to add a little extra flavor and color. Let's get a pasta, a mushroom, and onion and chicken. Hmm. It's really good. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Let's put the camera away and dig in. Someone in our house is a big fan of chocolate pudding. So we're going to have fresh, homemade, warm chocolate pudding yes. for dessert. With that film on the top that just tastes so good. No shortage of those little blood suckers trying to get into the camper. All things considered, even though there's like some gaps in this uh, window screen here. They're working very well to keep the bugs at bay. If any flying, biting, or stinging insect tries to come in here, we are prepared. Dishes are done. Pudding is cooling. And we've got the leftovers. That's like enough for lunch tomorrow. Oh yeah, again. that is a hearty meal in there. I had to show you guys these really awesome containers that I found last year for the RV. So they flatten out like this. They're silicone, so it's not plastic, supposed to be better for your health. And then they just pop up when you want it. Or I sometimes even just do like halfway in the fridge, you know, like all different kinds of things. And it has snap lids, snap lids which then there's some of my hair. Um, if you want to, you can kind of burp by pushing the top out and get all the air out and then put it back in and set it in the fridge. They're awesome. I love them. And I've got three sizes. So all different kinds of leftovers and they hardly take up any room in our cabinet down here. So much better than the glass we traveled with the first year we were here. Is it ready? I don't know. Warm pudding? Come on, how can that not be ready? Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're double dipping? Oh yeah, you got my cooties, oh. babe. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, it's almost 10 o'clock. We had a good evening visiting with Tim and his Alaskan truck camper, but I'm ready to call it a night. 
Really? I'm yes. shocked. It was 9.30. It's past my bedtime. All right. <laughs> okay, we'll grandpa. catch you in the next one.